Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Corin, also known as the Kitten Choreographer, and I'm a teen with a passion for makeup and kitten rescue. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take care of kittens from three to four weeks old. This is what I would call the traditional bottle baby age. They're turning into kittens, they're starting to explore and do kitteny things, but they're still in bottles, they haven't transitioned to dry feed yet, and they still need some pretty supportive care. If you want to know how to care for newborn kittens, I do have a video all about that already with a different litter that I did a couple months ago. So I will go ahead and link that in the description. And in this video, I'm also not going to be talking super in-depth about supplies for kittens. I will be going through it briefly, but I'm not going to be going super in-depth. So I will link some videos I already did on kitten supplies in the description below. So you can go ahead and check out those tools if you want to go more in-depth to any of those topics. But today we are going to be talking about three to four week old kittens. Like I said, these guys are still on bottles, but I do generally keep these kittens in a bigger area than a tub. They have upgraded to a playpen and they do have litter box. Okay, so I'm just going to be showing you their setup here. For kittens this age, I usually do either a Tespo playpen, which is a plastic playpen made of panels that you can zip tie together to kind of make a square here. And just imagine that was here. It's just like a bunch of plastic panels making a rectangle. Right now, these guys are in an enclosed mesh playpen, which is another great option because there's another little older kitten running around here, and I want them to be separate. So that's why there's a lid on this so she doesn't jump in. So you can see this is a mesh playpen. This is my favorite brand. There are two styles of this playpen. This one is the Rough and Roughest brand. This is my favorite brand for mesh playpens because it's relatively inexpensive, but these do last a good amount of time. They're pretty good quality. You can just see this one's a circle. So these come in circles and the kind I have now I just got. These have little metal rods that you have to stick into different spots all around it. So it's less portable than some other types, which you see. This one is here. This is a bad quality one. It's a different brand, but you can see it sticks up with rods that are already kind of in there and you can't take them out. Rough and Rough This does have one like that. I have one in my room for Sme actually. And I suggest those if you need to move the playpen a lot. Like for example, you take your kittens to work every day and you need to move them. Sorry, they're loud. They need to be fed. I'll feed them in a minute. If you take your kittens to work every day or move them often, I suggest getting one of the collapsible ones without the metal rods. But if you get the circular one here, I will link both types in the description below, along with all the other supplies that I talk about in this video. Those are affiliate links, so if you do buy them, they help me out a bit. Thank you if you do decide to help me out. But I will link both types in the description below, but just know this one is great, but it's not as portable as the other type of playpen, of mesh playpen. So this is their setup. You can see this one does have a bottom. I just put their litter box in there. I have puppy pads underneath these blankets because they're not totally litter trained yet and I don't want to ruin this playpen. I have their um, heat pad over there with just the cord sticking out from the little unzipped part and I have blankets. So that's pretty much their setup currently. If you did a Tespo playpen, it would basically just be the rectangle with just the same supplies just you know it's in a test boat with no lid so that's basically the setup they're in right now now I'm gonna switch back to my other camera so we can talk about some more stuff so I'm just gonna quickly run through some of the supplies you need for bottle baby kittens three to four weeks again not super in-depth but we're just gonna give the quick run through I definitely recommend a playpen whether that be a test bow or plastic type playpen or a mesh playpen the thing is Kittens three to four weeks, you've introduced them to the litter box, but they're babies, they're learning. So they're not gonna use the litter box every time and it's a lot easier to manage and clean up if they're in an enclosed area. If you give them the entire run of the room, it's gonna be messy, you're gonna get frustrated because there's pee and poop all over the floor. And it just makes it harder for them to learn. So I definitely recommend a playpen until they're a little bit older, you know, and they've got the hang of the litter box. You need blankets to put on the bottom of those playpens. I recommend puppy pads to put underneath for if they, you know, pee everywhere. And they're still gonna need a heat pad. I still give them a heat pad at this age. They start being able to regulate around four to five weeks, but I still like to give them the comfort of that heat source. And you're still gonna need to be weighing your kittens one to two times a day. I just have a little box and a little kitchen scale. I weigh in grams, you can also weigh in ounces. And then you're gonna need a litter box. I use some small litter boxes. I'm not gonna give them like a full size cat litter box because that's gonna be hard for them to get into. I, I don't know if they still have these. I will try and link something similar in the description box, but I found these like trays at Target that are supposed to be used 
for like school supplies but I got those and I use those for my little boxes but I don't know if they have those anymore because I got those at the beginning of the school year and I've just been using them ever since but I know the canned food that comes in the little trays those trays work great for litter boxes just for one time use thing but I will try and link something that will work as a small litter box for your kittens in the description below and you can get creative like they just need like a small square rectangular thing that litter can fit into you know and for litter you're gonna want to be using non clumping litter that is very important these kittens are babies and they will try and eat the litter and clumping litter can clump in their stomachs and kill them so non clumping is very very important I will try and link below the unclumping litter I use I use a clay one because I find it doesn't stink as much but you can use whatever type of unclumping litter you think is good or that you like so let's move on to feeding these guys like I said will need to be bottle fed I have six in this litter and they drink a lot they drink about six parts of formula or six tablespoons of powder 12 tablespoons of liquid every feeding some kittens drink a little bit more some kittens drink a little bit less I try and make like six parts up sometimes they don't drink at all it just really depends on what they're feeling that day and the supplies for their formula is pretty similar the only thing is I feed these guys in a bottle instead of a syringe because they're old enough for a bottle and I use the pet AG bottle I use miracle nipples. I find miracle nipples are a lot easier than the nipples that come on the bottles because they're pre-cut and the kittens just latch them better. You're also going to need a blender bottle in order to mix the formula up and you know I, I think I said all of that and the formula I use now I used a different formula actually for my last litter. I think I used it was either Breeders Edge or Kmart. I think it was Kmart. Kmart, Breeders Edge and the new one I'm using Fox Valley are all good formulas. A lot of people have bad experiences with Kmart. I've never had a bad experience with it but just putting in some other people's opinion here. I actually, um, my favorite formula to use is Fox Valley. I will try and insert a picture of the bag here. Me and my rescue started using this formula recently and we love it. It is the best formula I've tried so far. And of course I haven't tasted it, but my kittens love it. Their poops are good. They're gaining well. So I definitely am gonna keep using Fox Valley and that's the formula I recommend the most. Do buy it from the Fox Valley website instead of Amazon though, even though I will link the Amazon version down below it's just cheaper. That's one instance where I say don't use my affiliate links because it's cheaper to buy it from the website. This is Azalea. She's the older kitten I was talking about that was running around. She's about to get adopted though, so then I'll switch these guys to a Tespo. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the schedule real quick before I actually show me feeding them. I feed these guys every four to five hours. They drink a lot. Yeah, they drink a lot, but it's up to your kittens just what they decide to drink. As for stimulating, you probably know that you need to stimulate younger kittens, kittens that don't quite have a litter box. Every time you feed them and and for stimulating, around three weeks, I start stimulating every other feeding. And then around three and a half weeks, I just stop stimulating and try and convince them to just use the litter box. So in my setup in the garage, I just feed them on my lap. I'm wearing shorts today, so I put a um, swaddling like on my lap so their claws don't scratch me. And I'm going to adjust this camera um, real quick. I have six kittens in this litter. It's my biggest litter that I've ever had. And they are all named after characters from the 100. This is Clark. I've had these guys since they were three days old. And they were found in a creek after someone put them in a plastic bag and tossed them out. But you have to be some special kind of evil to toss out newborn kittens. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you hungry? She says, yes, I'm very hungry. But she's a very good girl. If you've had bottle babies from since when they were really little, they will just be the sweetest things by three and a half to four weeks. She's purring and making air biscuits right now. Yeah, she's really sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and tilt my camera down. These guys are about four weeks, maybe like three and a half to four weeks, I can't remember. So I am not stimulating them anymore, but I'm just taking my formula, which is warm and filled with Fox Valley. And I just stick it in her mouth, and because she has been bottle fed for pretty much her entire life, she's got the hang of this. You can see the ear wiggles. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the best thing. You can see the ear wiggles, and you can see she just latches right on. She knows what's going on. If you get three and a half to four week old kittens that don't latch well because maybe they just got taken away from mom and or someone like brought them and for some reason they can't be with mom anymore it might be a lot harder for them to latch and maybe next time I get kittens that are that age and hard to latch I can make a video on it but for right now these guys have always been great eaters you can see just in that little bit of time she ate this much um I don't really give them seconds like I don't feed them all and then go back and feed them all again because they're just at the age where they get all they want the first time and you can see she's done she's kind of biting on the nipple a bit and so I'm just gonna take a baby wipe 
and wipe her face, make sure she doesn't have a milk mustache. Although at this age, they don't have as much of a milk mustache. If you see this baby, she's super chill and she may just like be flopping over, but that's not because she's not active. Um, you do want them to be active, but she's just so chill. She's happy after her meal, you know? She loves me. There she's going, making the air biscuits again. At this age, at three weeks old, they should have the little tiny teeth at the top and bottom of their mouth. Not their canines, but just the little teeth. And at three and a half to four weeks old, their canines, the sharp pokey teeth, will start coming in. So right now, she's kind of got just the start of canines coming in, and she's got those little tiny teeth at the bottom. Sorry I can't show you well, it's just really hard to show. But you can see she's super chill and super happy after her feeding. She's just making the little air biscuits, which I just think is the cutest thing in the world. Let's just bask in the glory of an amazingly cute bear cub kitten. <laughs> I call them bear cub kittens at three to three and a half weeks just because they kind of look like bear cubs and it's really cute. Oh my goodness, she's the cutest thing ever. But I have to put you up now because you have five other siblings that are very angry because they have not been fed yet. This is Jasper. Jasper, Jasper, if you've seen the 100, let me know. Tell me what your favorite characters are. I will try and name all these kittens as I feed them. I love these guys so much. They're so sweet. They're just the best little kittens. Look at the ear wiggles. Monty, will you please wait your turn? He's just screaming in the playpen. I have to zip the playpen shut after I take out a kitten because otherwise they're gonna like stampede out. And at three and a half to four weeks, they definitely should be pretty good at walking or just like, you know, good at moving around. Not necessarily, you know, running, but they should be starting to play, just like flailing at each other and stuff like that. Bellamy, why are you eating litter? He's just sitting over there in the litter box eating litter like a silly goose. You all done? So I just wait a second, let him breathe, and then stick the bottle back in his mouth to see if he wants any more. And you'll see he relashed, so he just wants a little bit more. And I do make my um, formula in either a one cup or two cup measuring cup. Normally a one cup, but I don't have quite enough of those to have them all the time, so I use some two cups sometimes too. So you can see the two of them ate that much. Wipe off his face, enjoy his cuteness. Oh, look how cute you are. Also, sorry if I sound weird. I have a bit of a cold. I'll be fine, though. Who's gonna be next? Whoever runs out the fastest will be next. Monty. So this is Monty. One thing you may notice about Monty is one of his eyes is a lot smaller than the other and it's kind of cloudy. We are in the process, like we know something's wrong with it and we're probably gonna take him to see a vet soon. We were just seeing if it bothered him. I'm just giving him some time. Sometimes they get really excited and take a couple tries to latch just because they're so excited to eat. But we know something's wrong with him and we are watching out for it. I think he may be blind in that eye, but it is hard to tell. This formula bottle is about empty, so I'm gonna pour in some more. So we are watching out to see what's wrong with it and we will be taking the appropriate measures to make sure he gets better or lives his best life with whatever it is. And he's had the messed up eyes since he opened them and I've had him since um, three days. So whatever it is, I think it's a birth defect. He is adorable. And then just wipe his face. Get off the milk mustache. <laughs> You're so cute. Okay, who is next? Raven, let's do Raven next. This is Raven. <laughs> Are you making air biscuits? She's like, just shut up and feed me already. You have poop on your face, I just noticed that. Let me grab a wipe. They are pretty messy at this age, so sometimes I have to give them baths if they get poop on them or step in poop. I have to change out their blankets a lot. It's just part of the process, you know? Kittens aren't clean. Well, cats are clean. Cats are generally pretty clean once they get the hang of life and using the litter box, but kittens, kittens aren't clean. And I'm pretty sure I said all of this in my newborn kitten video, but I didn't rewatch that. So I'm not sure exactly what I said because it was several months ago. But you are always going to want to feed kittens in a downward position, like with their belly facing down, because that is the way that they would nurse on their mom. Humans do nurse on their back. That's just the way humans nurse. So a lot of people think that kittens should be nursed that way too. But kittens are not humans, and you have to take care of kittens the way they need to be taken care of. And they need to be taken care of by nursing on their bellies, or like bellies down. Otherwise they could aspirate and aspirating is no good. This is my little baby. This is Octavia. She's a little bit smaller than she should be, but 
she's growing on her own pace, so I'm okay with her being small. One thing, you don't want to squeeze the bottle. If kittens aren't latching, you need to be feeding them with a syringe because then you can very carefully control the amount you're pushing into their mouth. With bottles, you shouldn't squeeze. The only times I will squeeze is if kittens, like if I stick the bottle in their mouth and they're like, what is this? Then I will squeeze one tiny, carefully controlled drop into their mouth. And then they're like, oh, this is milk. I know what this is. Well, kitten milk, it's not a cow milk, but it's, kitten formula. So that is all you can squeeze. You do not want to be like, hey, I'm just going to squeeze a bunch of formula into the kitten's mouth because that's not good and that could make a masquerade. Here's the cutie pie, Octavia. This is my big boy. This is Bellamy. Bellamy is 150 grams bigger than average and he's just chilling with that. He's purring right now really loudly. This group loves to purr. One thing I love about bottle babies is that they are just the sweetest things ever. They see people as their parents because most of the time they never know their parents or don't remember their parents so people are their parents and that's why they love them you know they see people they think of food they have a positive association with food because they like it so people equals food and food equals good so people equal good basically and that's why bottle babies are rewarding to me just because you get to help these little bundles of cuteness and even though it's hard because you have to get up in the middle of the night, it's all worth it when you see their little purrs and their little air biscuits. Let me fill this up a bit more for you, Bellamy. And I'm not sure if I said this, but it's at about three weeks that I move them out of the incubator or you're going to want to move them out of the tub they're in and into a playpen because by then they've really just outgrown it and they want more room to explore. But again, you don't want to give them like entire run of a room because then they're going to not know how to use the litter box. Bellamy is the one that gets really excited to eat and sometimes has a hard time latching, but you just have to be patient with ones like that. I think he's actually full now though, because I already he already ate a bunch. Oh no. You're not full. He's just wagging his tail. You're a funny little guy, Bellamy. You really wanted a lot more, huh? So this is my sweet boy Bellamy. Now I'm gonna go back and show my face. Okay, so that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope this video was helpful for you all in knowing how to take care of bottle babies that are a little bit older, aren't quite ready for weaning age, but aren't newborns anymore. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more makeup and kitten related content. I upload on Sundays and Wednesdays if I can, and if I can't, then I upload whenever I want to. Also make sure to leave any thoughts or questions that you have down in the comment section below, and also follow my other social medias, TikTok and Instagram at The Kitten Choreographer for more kitten related content. Thank you so much for watching again, and goodbye!